Welcome back to our workshop. My name is Scott Bennett and I'm the owner of Wouldn't It Be Nice Furniture Repair. I see a lot of chairs come through my workshop and they frequently have pads on them and these pads help protect the flooring from getting scratched when the chair is moving around. Now there are a couple different styles of pads here but I frequently hear people having challenges attaching these to chairs. So I'm going to show you the proper way to do it. I'll talk about the different types of pads. Stick with me, I'll show you how it's done. Our videos show you how to add value and character to your home. This is the centerpiece of the room, so it really needs to visually work. Learn how to get quality results that you'll be proud of. Welcome to Home Improvement Woodworking. I've got a variety of chairs in the shop this week that all have different pads on them. So we can take a look at each one. I'll start by flipping this over and we'll look at the pads on this. On this chair, there's a pad missing here and these ones are fairly worn. So if we take a close look here, you can see there's some residue from something here. And then overall, there's a bit of a shininess to it. That would be from the adhesive on the pad that came off of this. On this side, you can see the pad has shifted off to the side. It did start over here, but over time, the adhesive starts to let go. And this one shifted. So it's time to replace it. These pads do wear over time. So you can see here, the adhesive backing is starting to come off on this. And it's not too bad. Some of these wear right through. I'll show you an example of that a little bit later. You might be tempted to purchase pads like this, stick them on there, and away you go. But that's actually a mistake. The problem is, you can have the best adhesive in the world here, but if you've got a dirty, contaminated surface here, it's not going to stick. So there's two ways to clean this off. I'm going to show you one way to do it with tools, and one way to do it without. So if you've got some tools around, a paint scraper is a great way to start cleaning this off. So what you can do is use this to get rid of the gumminess and everything that's on here and really take off that first layer of gunk. The next step is to use my sander on this and I scrape this off so I don't end up gumming up this sandpaper and ruining it. So I'm using 120 grit sandpaper here. Let's get to it. Now I have a clean surface, free of contamination, that's perfect for the adhesive to stick to. If you don't have the tools to do mechanical removal like this, you can use chemicals also to remove the residue. I've got mineral spirits and I've got denatured alcohol as well. Both of these will remove sticky residue. The denatured alcohol is a little bit more aggressive though, because if you've got a shellac finish on here, it can remove finish. So I would recommend using mineral spirits and it is a chemical, so you need to make sure that you're wearing appropriate PPE. I just keep my glove wrapped up here because I can use it over and over again. The trick that I use to get it back inside out is just pinching the end and then I can get my hand back in there. So I'll open this up and what I want to do is just put a little bit on a cloth. You don't need a whole lot of this. Just enough to get it damp. And then you need scrubbing. So this does have a smell to it. You should be using it in a well-ventilated area. So it might be something you want to take outside to do the scrubbing. But you can see here how it's getting this area clean. There's a little bit of an old pad left here. So it'll just take some elbow grease to get through this. You can see there's a bit of a gloss here and here it's dull. So I've got this cleaned off but this gloss here is probably some of the previous adhesive or maybe using a plastic. So I've got a little bit more scrubbing to go. With everything cleaned off, I can now move on to putting on the pads. Now with mineral spirits, I'd recommend letting it dry for about 20 to 30 minutes. That's why I prefer the mechanical because I can just clean them up and then get right to it. Now, these pads come in different colors. Uh, typically, beige and brown are the most common. Uh, black is another option. And what you want to do is choose a pad that's the same size or smaller than the end of the chair leg. So this one fits really well, but you also want to get as close as you can to the color. So this dark pad, if you're looking at it from an extreme angle, you might see. But if I put this beige pad on here, you can see it's much less noticeable. So it's just a matter of peel and stick. 
you want to make sure that you push it well all the way around for that initial stick, but the weight on the chair will make it stick as well. Now a felt pad is one of several options you have for the end of chair legs. Let me get this chair out of the way and I'll grab another one. This is one of two chairs I'm currently working on. The other one's right here and it's ready for glue up. This one has different pads on it. These ones are called glides. These ones are made of nylon. They're typically nailed on and they've got felt pads on them. But you can see this one's worn off and right at the back of this chair, it's down to the nylon. On the other back leg here, you can see the felt coming off. So these are really beyond the end of life. On the front legs of this chair, you can see this one has totally come off and this one over here is cracked. And the risk here is that this nylon breaks and you end up with a nail scratching the floor. So what's better to use, a glide like this or a stick-on adhesive? It's a little more confusing than that because there are different products out there. This one, you actually screw on the bottom of the chair and it provides a space for that padding to fit. And this one is a non-skid pad. Let me get out all the different options I have, lay them out on the bench here, and I'll talk about the pros and cons. Here are all the pads that I have in my workshop. So let me just sort these. There's a couple of glides there. I'll call that a hybrid. This is the anti-skid. And these are some felt pads, dark ones. These ones are black ones, some strips. And this is a variety pack that's got a whole bunch of different sizes in it. So there's lots of options here for choosing the right tool for the job. I'll get the simple one out of the way first. This one here is a gripper pad. This one's labeled as anti-skid, and it's good for locations where you don't want the furniture to move. So if you've got a coffee table, for example, on a hardwood floor that shifts around a little bit, this is something you can put on the pads underneath and it won't move anymore. So it's a great product for that. It comes in strips and pads, you can cut them to fit. The next one are the glides. Now these glides are nail-on. So they're really robust in terms of being able to hang on to that surface. And the ones here I've got are also screw-on. Now the advantage of these is because they're more robust, they'll work in an environment where you might have a brick floor, a ceramic tile with grout marks in between, where the shifting of the chair uh, needs that robustness of something to hang on to it. The potential disadvantage of these though is when they wear down, if you're not paying attention to them, you could end up causing more damage. In fact, this hybrid one here has a warning on the back that says, uh, use caution as incorrect placement may promote floor damage. So the risk on these ones is you could create some damage and I would not use these on a luxury vinyl tile floor or a hardwood floor because of that potential damage. That's where really the bulk of this comes in and that's felt. Felt is great because it's just an adhesive and if it does wear down, it's just wearing down, down to the bare wood. Now, when you do wear down to the bare wood of a chair, you do run the potential of scratching the floor. So you need to pay attention to them. But the key challenge I think people have with these is they put replacements on and they're not sticking. They get frustrated and they look for a hybrid product like this that they can screw on and it's more robust. But again, I think the risk is too high of potentially damaging your floor. I've got an antique glide here, and this one you can see has scratches in it. This was on a piano bench. Um, a great way to protect the end of the wood of the furniture, but not great for the floor. This might work on a, a concrete surface, but something you definitely don't want to be using on a hardwood floor. The key to choosing these products is to make sure you're solving the right problem. Choose the product that's going to work on the flooring you're looking to protect. My second piece of advice is if you're using felt pads, make sure you're buying a quality product, not an inexpensive one that will fall off. I'm going to leave another video here that I think you'll enjoy. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel, you can click over here, click on that bell icon to get notified every time we publish a video.